with floating islands of plastic in the Pacific and microplastics entering the seafood chain, a South African artist has turned herself into an environmental artivist to address the problem. I'm Janet Ormond. I'm an environmental artist from Komiki in Cape Town. Transforming waste into small pieces of creative joy is getting her message across. I realized that there was a movement worldwide of artists working with plastic waste as a medium and that's something that really resonated with me and I got so inspired. Making decisions now that impact the future is so important. I'm a mother of two young boys and I think about their future every day now. It's my responsibility so it's become a big part of what I'm doing to raise awareness for other people about their futures as well. I use all the plastic that I pick up off the beaches to create works that are inspired by nature and the very thing that we are trying to protect for the future. And I hope that it brings some people joy even though it's a material that is ultimately so tragic. A finalist in last year's State of the Art Gallery Awards for visualizing climate change, Janet recently collaborated with the Shark Education Center in Cork Bay. I was commissioned by them earlier this year to create the 13 sharks of False Bay and it was a real honor to be able to do such a thing for them. Dr. Clover Mabin was impressed. I asked Janet to make a special series for us and it was based on a kind of campaign that we ran during lockdown actually where we focused on 13 of the most common shark species in False Bay. There are more than 13 shark species in False Bay but we just chose the most common species and so those ranged from things like the white shark, the largest species was the white shark, to the puff adder shy shark but it really shows all the different characteristics of those different species. The work they do at the Shark Educational Centre is phenomenal. Education is key to a better future and they have a lot of underprivileged school groups that are opened up to the environment of the ocean by coming to a centre like this. Since the artist is raising two sons who will inherit this global challenge, her work is personal. Once I've come home and I've washed all my plastic and dried it, I'm able to come up into my studio and sort it and then decide on what I'm going to make with it. An heir to her grandfather's creative talent, Janet paints with a different palette. Welcome to my studio. So I thought I'd show you some of my finds along the way and one of them is my collection of spinning tops. These have become very symbolic for me for source to see. We may not live near the ocean, but that doesn't mean the plastic in the ocean hasn't directly come from our lives. Some of the most common things that I find on the beach are lollipop sticks and every child wants one and we never thought that it would become such a huge problem. Another thing that I find a lot of, in fact thousands of, are earbuds. Plastic earbuds which you don't think about but are often thrown down the toilets and are making their way through the sewage system into our waterways and again into our ocean. To any reasonable mind, this is a sobering display. Through my journey with my art with plastic pollution, I've learned so much about the environment around us and how much we are impacting the world through our waste and our overuse and consumption of plastic packaging and daily use in our lives. This series, The Gardens Below, makes clear what's at stake. It's very difficult to make the change that we all need to see, but one small change in your life can make a huge difference on a daily basis over a period of time. And by just changing one or two things in your whole household, in your daily work life, can have a positive impact going forward. 
Janet is living the idea that you can't go back to the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. Doing so might still transform our world.